Good morning, everyone. It's going to be another warm, although overcast day today. That's okay, we're not always exclusively fair weather farmers. We can in fact work when it's not sunny and 75 outside. We just try not to. My dad had over exaggerated how quickly a lines tractor would have the DB60 planter back to us. He said it'd be done today. I talked to the shop foreman. He said, there's no way it's gonna be today, possibly tomorrow, which is what I was planning on doing, bringing it home, putting the plates in. Maybe we'll get to it tomorrow. I'm going to look at this planter some more, but it's pretty close to ready to go. And I'm also taking inventory on both the Hagee and the tanker trailer to get new sight tubes in, replace anything I think needs replaced before we move into the next spray season. I gotta put in a pretty big and pricey order to get those things in and get them installed with time to spare because we'll only blink our eyes a few times and the planters will be rolling and the sprayer will be putting down chemical. I may also back this planter out and make some adjustments to the tire pressure over at the big air compressor. A lot of people were saying kind of 15 to 20 PSI for this based on the planner it's pulling. I'm going to at least check first and see how much PSI is in the tire. They look a little low. Okay, I guess not. Assuming this is correct, they almost have 20 PSI in them. That just leads me to believe that the excess ballasting on the back axle and the way of the planner or why it's squatting like that. Seeing that now, I may actually agree with my dad that maybe we don't need all these weights on the rear. Anyways, I'm going to run into the John Deere dealership, talk to people much better paid and smarter than I, and maybe when we come back, the sun might be out. That'd be nice. Cheer us up a little bit. I did run into a Lions tractor a little bit ago. The sun did happen to come outside, so it's a lot nicer out, although I think my list of things to do today is pretty limited. Tomorrow I'll probably get on to the mapping because ground's dried out a little bit. The DB60 is still apart. It looks like they're installing one of those Bluetooth axles on the bottom, just up on jack stands. I'm sure I'll put a picture in here for you to look at. Also show you the piece here. If you look at the top end of it, it has an ever so slight bend in it. It's very hard to see in the picture. If you look at it in person, especially if you had a flat object to put against it, you would be able to visualize that warp in there. John Deere has been very good about standing behind their product. They've worked with us. Our warranty actually expires only one year for a $400,000 planner here in March. And they got everything fixed up. We think they had to send it to a third party machine shop because all of the spare ones they sent in were also warped. It's just a part that they don't have a set tolerance for at the factory. So if you have a new DB60 or any DB planner, you might look at yours. We checked a few of them on the lot at Alliance Tractor. They were all fine. We just happened to get the one that was warped and all the replacement parts we got were also warped. So again, if you have a DB planner, you might check it out because it's worth looking at. I don't think a planner of that value and an axle carrying that amount of weight should be warped like this. I will give credit to the machine shop. I don't know their name. They did a good job getting it welded back together. It looks clean, painted it back like brand new John Deere factory paint. So hopefully we'll have that back on and maybe next week when it's 70 degrees. Yes, you heard that right, 70 degrees next week we can get this back in, get the plates on it, and start to think about maybe doing something else other than twiddling our thumbs waiting on planting season. I'm interrupting the action for some urgent news. You are at risk for identity theft and other malicious actions right now. In today's extremely technological world, your personal and private information is widely available on the internet. Scammers and spammers alike can sift through this information to take advantage of you if you're not careful. Good news is that there is no reason to panic. The sponsor of today's video, Aura, is here just for fixing this issue. Without you having to lift a finger, Aura scours the internet to hunt down this information and the brokers that are peddling it to help secure your data and opt out of anything that could be taking advantage of you. Depending on the severity of your exposure, you could have upwards of hundreds, if not thousands of compromises across the internet where people have access to all of this private content. There are nefarious parties out there on the internet who will use this to help compromise your bank accounts, social media, accounts and a few other things you have access to just by getting started with these little tidbits of data. 
by going to battle on our behalf, Aura helps prevent these very significant compromises by taking care of this information that leads to it. One of the best selling points of Aura is that you get a few additional features that many other services do not offer in a bundled package, like antivirus, VPN, password management, parental controls, identity theft insurance, and more without having to download a million different apps. Super easy to set up, and best of all, it's all at one simple, affordable price. If you value your privacy like I value mine, it's time to head on over to aura.com forward slash farmer and get started on your service today. By typing in that link or clicking on one of the links in the video here, you get a two week trial on Aura services to try out and I'm sure you're gonna love it. Again, that is aura.com forward slash farmer. Thanks to Aura for sponsoring today's video. Now back to the regularly scheduled programming. Happy Monday, ladies and gentlemen. I'm almost exuberant to report that after working on it on and off this off season, I finally finished mapping all of our fields with the new GPS system. So we should be good to go barring pulling into the fields and realizing I did everything wrong. Let's just hope that that doesn't happen. On top of having this finished, it certainly helps my mood that it is quite literally 70 degrees today here in central Illinois, which is odd for the end of February. People are putting on gas or anhydrous around. Not usually something we'll get an opportunity to do. So it's either very good or maybe concerning that we don't have more moisture in the ground going into the growing season. It is the tail end of February though, so plenty of time for it to start raining. Although, I guess I have been saying that like a broken record since last growing season that there's plenty of time for it to start raining, so it ought to start eventually. It was extremely pleasant this morning, and this afternoon the wind has really kicked up. There's a red flag warning, no burning. Low humidity winds and dry ground conditions mean starting fires right now is probably not the best idea. Because we have all of the mapping done, we can take the 4640 display and move it to the Hagee when we get some time. And then the 7000 receiver with the RTK activation can go to the 8R340 for planting corn. And we can finally get all this stuff out of the cab of this commander. I have really enjoyed the sportiness and the heater in this commander this off season while I was doing this. The one problem I have with this though is that Commander just doesn't quite roll off the tongue like Gator does. So Allie and the kids and I have reverted to just referring to this as a Gator. It's much cooler than a Gator minus a full HVAC system and a sealed cab. Did the job. By fully disassembling this setup right here, I'm acknowledging that any mistakes I've made will not be fixed until next off season because we're moving on to planting now. Off season work is winding down. This did give me the perfect excuse today though, being completely honest, to not have to help Chris and Jeff sweep out that soybean bin at the main farm. It's got a power sweep in it, integrated, so it's not a lot of hard work, just not the most exciting work. Not that this is super thrilling either. It's been so long since I did this, I don't recall how I even fished this through and tied it off. And what a labyrinth I've created here. It's like taking your socks off after a long day of work. Another exciting development is that we are up to 11 eggs today, which puts us at our highest production yet. Days are getting a little longer, temperatures are getting warmer, which helps. And these hens are just getting to the age where they kind of start laying. We've got 13, so we should get two more one of these days, or hit 13 total one day. Talk about having a knack for impeccable timing. Showed up first thing this morning to help finish this last load, and Chris and Jeff finished this bean bin out yesterday. That's pretty nice. Glad to have these off the farm, although it would have been nice to have sold them 12 months ago for multiple dollars more than they're worth today. That's okay. We haven't sold them yet. We haven't lost enough money on them. York Binco did obviously fix the sweep auger because it functioned correctly. The one thing that's not fixed though is the fact that I broke the slide. So now sometime between today and filling this bin again next fall, we'll have to have them come out and fix the slide engagement system because I broke it off somewhere, probably just a pin closer to the middle that's broken. And there's a few other issues with this bin as with all of our bins just because age and time takes its toll on everything. My dad was fairly confident that the DB60 planter that's in an Alliance tractor would be put back together and ready to come out here by now. And fortunately or unfortunately, depending on how you look at it, it's still not put back together. Not because there's been issues, they've just not had the mechanics there to get the job done. 
it's only the end of February. It is warm, so you could plant if you wanted to, although I don't think you'd listen to that devil on your shoulder this early in the season. Because of that, we're gonna focus on the corn planter day. It's relatively ready to plant, but I do need to put some stuff on it, and we've actually not run any kind of test on it. So I'm gonna back it out, fire it up, and make sure the units are at least gonna run. steamy out here. I got out of the cab to go grab the planner and I forgot the wonderful feature of these newer 8Rs that the PTO shuts off if you get out of the seat without activating the remote switch, which is a very annoying feature. I may have to add that switch to one of these screens just to keep my dad from being frustrated. I know it gets under my skin with the bean planner and I'm usually on top of these things. Anyways, I'm working right now on getting the vacuums automated. They're on the third and fourth switch. It just got two vacuums. I had to change some settings in this display. Of course, you've got your tried and true, change the settings and then restart it. So everything reboots correctly. <laughs> There's the howl we know and love. Looks like both vacuums are running. The planner will adjust the vacuums depending on seed flow adjustment needs. That's not a very good explanation because I really don't know what it decides it on. It knows more than I do, which isn't very much. Got interrupted on the planner project with the grain bin project. Dad wanted to move the conveyor down to one of the south corn bins, so we're doing that real quick. Not really a priority today. Conveyor is moved. Now it's in the way, so we will have to start hauling corn to get it out of the way. I wanted to talk to you about some upgrades we made on our farm to help plant straighter with our corn planter than we did last year. Those of you who are familiar with last planting season and summer, as our corn crop came out of the ground, you remember that we had a realization that our planter was not planting that straight. Some of it was human error. Looked like maybe my dad started drinking too early in the day. That's just a joke. And the other thing is that we had some computer errors, which were ultimately human errors, by not switching our RTK system over to a different tower from far away last year. It's just a mistake we didn't even think about correcting before the season started. This season, we've made three key upgrades to hopefully have straighter cornrows. It's not that big of a deal, and I don't really know that there's a tangible return to having your row straighter. First is obviously upgrading dad's planter tractor to this 8R340. More horsepower to the ground should help keep the planter going straighter, more aggressive pulling. Independent front suspension should stabilize the planter tractor across the ground a little bit, improving how straight it can go across the ground. And then of course the front duels, I don't know if they'll have much of an impact. I'd like to think they would. The second upgrade for this planter tractor is switching to these 7,000 domes. You're gonna ask why I am switching these right now. And that is because this one has an RTK activation and the one that's on the tractor does not have an RTK activation on it. These receivers are supposed to be more accurate in general without RTK, but because of the SF RTK system, you don't have to switch towers. They're not radio based, they're satellite based it automatically switches towers and maintains optimal accuracy. And that's kind of the goal here, is to use this system on the corn planter. It's the only thing we run RTK on, and the sprayer, of course. I'm just not sure most of the time that paying a $1,500 RTK activation returns anything to you if you're not doing a precision pass. That's the nice thing about these 7000s. There's no additional hardware to run the RTK. They're identical receivers, you just gotta pay for the activation. You don't want the activation? You don't have to pay for it. And this one is gonna have a special place on the planter, which I'll talk to you about in a second. This secondary 7000 receiver is going to be mounted on the planter as our last upgrade for increasing our steering and planting accuracy. We are adding an implement guidance system so the tractor and the planter will communicate and basically the tractor will take guidance commands 
based on the position of the planter itself. A lot of operations are starting to add this to planters, strip till bars. It just improves the overall efficacy and accuracy, precision, I guess would be a better word, of your planter pass. If you combine this with like an auto path subscription from John Deere, it'll give you perfect lines for side dressing, spraying, harvesting. I don't think we're gonna spend that much money. Some of these programs I think are neat. They just don't have the return that's required. This though is not a premium upgrade. I don't know if we have to pay for anything other than the hardware and the mounting harness. I believe it's either standard with the system or because these signature series John Deere cabs come with the premium 4.0 suite of software, we don't have to pay for it. I, I don't know. So we've paid for it somewhere. It's just whether or not we have to pay for it every year is the other question. Long story short, this is going to mount on a mast we're installing right here on the front of the planter and it's supposedly going to help us. This is what we bought. It's a third party attachment, obviously. Cabmonitor.com sells it. It's called the Torch Runner. And it's a mask that goes right there in front of the CCS tanks on the frame mount there. I believe it uses the original hardware. We just got to loosen them a little bit. This may not match in color, but it is much cheaper than anything John Deere offers. I think that was what we kind of gathered. This is about the most cost effective way to put one of these on a John Deere planter that's not brand new. ones first you think do we have to get a bracket to put up there yes looks like we do do we have we might have an extra somewhere in your house I don't know we may not actually what we thought was going to be the hard part is now done and maybe we're on to the actual hard part this did not come with the GPS bracket so we ran into John Deere got one dad's gonna install that and I'm gonna start fishing around for where these harnesses hook up under here. Cause there's a lot of loose wires. You just gotta find which one you need. You sure you wanna be working underneath me? Yeah, you know, I was thinking that as I got down here, I don't wanna get hit in the head with a wrench or something. There's a lot of truth to that. This might be above our pay grade. Yeah, that's what I said. Where's the helicopter at? It's gotta be behind it, doesn't it? Dad and I very quickly decided that that mounting project or the hardware part of it, or the software part of it, was above our paper, so on to something else. these in first they won't all just go at once i don't think so aren't they, they bolted together no these two are those two are tractor's coming after lunch to look at that harness situation. He knows a lot about it. We don't know very much about it. And it's going to take me longer to figure that out than it would to just have them come out and do it. Okay, both sets of weights are off of both sides. It visually appears like the tires aren't squatting as much, so I think that's helped a little bit. 
I don't know that in most conditions those would really help us pull. I think we get plenty of traction. These are new tires or newer tires, so they probably do just fine. The tractor's heavy enough on its own for most applications. Some of you may disagree. I'm curious, just drop your comments below. I'm far from an expert in this domain. It's amazing how much easier those projects are when you use the forklift. I can only imagine trying to bear hug those weights. If it's even humanly possible to pick them up, I've got no idea what they weigh. They were heavy. Whew, it is another uncharacteristic scorcher here in central Illinois. High of 74 today, and it sure feels like it. I'm about to break a sweat doing absolutely nothing. The craziest part, though, is that the low tomorrow is 24 degrees, so about a 50 degree inversion here coming over the overnight hours with a storm and cold front moving through. While I was at home eating lunch, I sent over a setup file to the monitor with all of the new field boundaries, GPS lines, so they should come over once it boots up. I just missed the notification, but I did see the files. You see, you see file, and then it's going to pull it over the system really shortly. Import file next. Here's what I'm bringing in. I assume this is from the previous farmer. It must be their data. Next. Taking forever. The only hard part about these systems is that to delete all the old files, you have to deselect that operation. And to deselect it, you almost have to make another operation. So I make test. And then you can see I go over here and pull up our farm. And then there's a bunch of our fields. So looks like I got everything imported. With the new planter tractor and adding the implement steering system, the only thing I'm unsure about is our row shutoff settings. The mechanical time delays, I've set the same. The tractor has different offsets in the monitor. The planter's got different offsets. And I don't know what adding the secondary dome even changes. So once the guys from Alliance Tractor come out here, here in the next minute or two, I'll probably have a conversation about that with them. Because if it does change things, we might have to consider re-establishing our shutoffs before going to the season. There's one thing, we could use the same exact numbers with the old tractor, no changes. Now we're making a few changes that might justify revisiting those settings because there's nothing more embarrassing than gaps out in your cornfields. Fast forward a few hours, Matt and Jason from Alliance Tractor stopped by. They helped hook up the harness under the planter. I would have never figured that out on my own and walked me through setting everything up. We ran the planter and the tractor out to the field. Obviously, both of them, we couldn't have just taken one of them. They helped get everything fired up here on the monitor. They showed me, helped me calibrate everything. So it's relatively close to accurate. Looks like it's gonna help us plant straighter, do a better job than our previous systems. I will say that it is a different way of planting using the planter as the controller, not the tractor. I think there's gonna be a bit of a learning curve, but not much of a learning curve. So I was talking about that conveyor being in the way. I must say, after spending 20 minutes in the field, thinking around, going back and forth, the Command Pro is already growing on me quite a bit. I could see why someone would really like this system for driving. Still a little bit foreign, just because it's not a good old power shift. It's definitely operator friendly once you figure it out. It's not showing up correctly because we're inside the sheds blocking the receiver reception. You can see that here's our machine guidance receiver, the 7000. And then it knows that there's a 7000 on the implement. And then when they have signal, there's a little chain that shows up here in the top corner. That means they're connected. And essentially the planner is in control at that point in time on your monitors there's now two lines if i heard him correctly the bottom line is how far the planner's off from the auto steer line the top line is how far the tractor's off which is kind of irrelevant because all that matters is how close the planner is the nice thing about this system is because they're linked together with the planner having the rtk or sorry the tractor having the rtk activation it shares that activation with the planter so it gets RTK level activation as well. I'm surprised John Deere lets you get away with that for free, but they communicate with RTK and then they tell the tractor where to go. With all that being said, I almost think that maybe dad should have been in this tractor helping set this up so he could kind of learn how to do it. He's used to the Gen 4 because the combine, the 780 he runs has this Gen 4, as well as the 9620R, they're pretty intuitive. The implement steering though is different than what we're used to. Even when you turn on the end with the implement steering, it's not 
accepting the line based on the tractor's position. It's accepting the line based on the planter's position. So hypothetically, and maybe this isn't possible, if the planter is all the way over here, you know, you're doing a sharp turn, it may try to decide to grab the other line you were just on. Probably unlikely. I could see it happening though. So I got to take note of all these things to share with the boss man. The planter's in charge. If you just push this all the way forward, it goes to the full speed. If you pull it all the way back, it stops it. If you move it over, it goes to your set speed. Makes sense if you don't think about it. Still have a handful of things to get ready for planting season. Hopefully we catch this storm tonight they're calling for. I don't want severe weather. I do want rain though. It's statistically unusual, although not improbable, that it's this dry in late February, especially the warmth is kind of concerning as well. People put on anhydrous I mentioned earlier. We need more moisture, folks. We can go through a dry summer like we have the last few years if we have adequate subsurface moisture. We don't have that though. The tiles are trickling, still moisture coming out, but I'm more so concerned about what's happening below the tiles because that moisture is also important. So a little concern going into the next couple of months like to see a couple inches of rain at a minimum, but that's above my hands. I'm gonna take off. As always, I greatly appreciate every single one of you continuing to tune in and support the channel. Your viewership means the world to me. Catch you all in the next episode. Until then, make sure you like the video if you enjoyed it, subscribe if you wanna see more, and comment down below if you have any questions. You know I love to talk about farming. Have a great day, everyone. Peace.